Hi, this is Tiffany Cook with Cure to Shin Cares. I'm excited to have on with us today my personal cardiologist and Will's cardiologist, Dr. Pradeep Maman from the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. How are you doing today, Dr. Maman? Doing wonderful. Thank you, Tiffany, for inviting me. Absolutely. So good to see you. Um, so how, how are things going? I know we've, a lot of changes have happened with telehealth and you know, can you kind of paint a picture of what your day-to-day -day is looking like now as a response to the pandemic going on? Yeah, pre so pretty much for, from the entire campus, um, we, unless it's an emergent situation, um, we've asked our patients not to come to our campus, especially with this uh, pandemic in the state it is right now. But we are interacting with many of our patients through telehealth. Um, and some we've actually pushed back to summertime when we think that things are gonna be a little more in the clear. Um, but we're, we are doing a fair number of telehealth uh, with many of our patients, especially in my clinic, which uh, um, looks at very uh, vulnerable patients with various forms of muscular dystrophy. So that, that kind of brings a, a question up to me. Um, as, as I am a carrier, as you know, um, are there any precautions or special things that I need to be considering uh, for myself? Yes. Well, I think for both DMD patients as well as DMD carriers, um, there is a slightly higher risk with this virus in the sense that um, for carriers in particular, you know, um, we have to be careful with, um, with pulmonary issues um, and, and, and taking precautions there. The other is, and this applies for both DMD patients as well as in carriers, is the whole question about um, continuing to take your medications, uh, it's especially the ACE inhibitors. We know that uh, individuals who are in ACE inhibitors, like lisinopril or enalapril, um, these drugs uh, do uh, preserve and improve cardiac function in DMD carriers and, and patients. Um, and from other studies, we know that when patients stop those medications, their heart function get, can get worse and get more stressed. So it is very important to continue those ACE inhibitors in particular. We don't really have firm data as to what is the increased risk, um, but the, the, the general sense is that carriers as well as uh, the boys uh, and young men are at risk because your diaphragm is often affected, which is very important for your breathing. And so if you have diaphragmatic weakness and you get a pulmonary uh, process or infection like COVID, that can exacerbate the problem. Um, and so what I tell uh, all my patients actually, the best form is wash your hands uh, well and often. Um, and that should be a general principle for all of us, not just muscular dystrophy patients, but um, throughout society, washing hands does save lives. Uh, Dr. Momin, so why is there so much talk about whether or not to take prescribed ACE inhibitors? Because there are some small studies that have demonstrated or suggested that um, ACE inhibitors um, may exacerbate uh, um, the whole process of this COVID-19. Um, but actually, most of that data is actually unfounded. There are several um, basic science studies in nature medicine and other studies that have actually demonstrated that actually these ACE inhibitors and their cousins called ARBs, um, like Losartan and Valsartan, actually may be, actually be beneficial. Um, and so um, most of those uh, earlier, uh, I won't say rumors, but thoughts were from small studies that were not very, that were not substantiated. And so um, if there's one thing I can stress to, especially to the DMD community, if you're on an ACE inhibitor, it's safe and you should definitely take it because the risk of stopping it, we know can be more de detrimental on the heart, especially during these stress situations. Uh, are there other cardiac related medicines such as beta blockers safe to continue using? Absolutely, you should remain on uh, uh, all those medications, the beta blockers, the ACE inhibitors, the spironolactone or plerinone, um, because these are really the key drugs that are maintaining uh, the cardiac function in both DMD 
patients, boys and men, as well as carriers. Um, and there is really no evidence that these are detrimental in the setting of COVID-19. Um, so my advice is you should continue taking those meds. Uh, are there any specific cardiac related precautions that a um, care provider should be aware of when, when treating someone with Duchenne? So there are, and, and you know, this, um, uh, both Duchenne's boys and men, as well as carriers, um, as I mentioned earlier, are at risk of COVID-19. Um, because if it gets into your lungs, about 20% to 30% of our hospitalized patients who are in the MICU also have cardiac related issues. COVID-19 is associated with cardiovascular complications. Um, we don't understand um, always who gets it, but we do know certain populations, um, people who are smokers, people who have hypertension, who have diabetes, um, and predisposed cardiomyopathies like Duchenne's um, are, uh, um, can be exacerbated. What, what we feel, and there are different scenarios in how the heart is affected by COVID-19. Um, sometimes it can mimic a heart attack, and we've seen that in our older patients, not with Duchenne's, but other patients. Um, more often, and the concern that I have, especially with uh, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, is that it can mimic uh, an inflammation of the heart or myocarditis. Um, and that can be uh, pretty uh, devastating um, and deadly. Um, and so uh, the way you avoid it, once again, is stay at home, wash your hands, and if you have to get out um, outside, wear a mask. Um, and I think those three recommendations are going to be um, in place for several more months. Uh, unfortunately, um, as society kind of opens up, there there's going to be more room to expand to let loose some of these restrictions. But for patients like Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, um, wearing a mask and and good hand washing should remain a, a kind of principles that you should follow for at least the near future, um, because we anticipate cases of COVID-19 continuing for at least a year or more. Um, we won't be in the heightened peak where we are now, but they're going, they're going to continue to be seasonal episodes of this uh, infection, and one needs to be cautious. I mean, life as we knew it before, you know, January, uh, unlikely will return to that level, at least for some time. I know that might be not what people want to hear, um, but that's what we feel in the medical community. Oh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Maman. That was absolutely um, wonderful insight. And yes, certainly not what we want to hear right now, but we do want to maintain safety. Um, it's, it's just so, so very important. So um, thank you again. I certainly appreciate your time and everything that you've done for the Duchenne community. I really appreciate it. Thank you for this invitation and everyone stay safe and healthy.